Okay, let's break this week's VisFX shot down for you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for taking so long to get this video up. I moved back into school and I've just been a little bit too busy to maintain the um, blog. However, now I should be getting videos up on a weekly or maybe every other week basis from this point forward. The next video I'm going to do is actually water bending. I have it filmed, just have to do the effects for it. Uh, so the breakdowns are probably going to come on Tuesdays or Thursdays while my roommate is in class because it's kind of awkward to record these while somebody is standing right there. Um, so I'll probably release the videos on the weekends and the breakdowns like the Tuesday or maybe Wednesday after. So moving along to the actual file, uh, this week I figured I would break down mostly how I approached the hole considering that was the um, main effect that I wanted to go for. So let's take a look at that first and then if I have time we'll go over some of the other stuff that's important. So the hole was um, how I approached that. First of all I hand animated it. I didn't track it or anything. Um, here it is. So th these are the edges of the hole. They are on their own render layer right here. Nice and beautiful. You'll notice that I animated these to follow him in the video. Only to about there before he's hidden by the cannon. But then the main question or problem was how to show the other side of the footage. Like how to show the building behind him after he gets shot. So I approached that was with a whole mask and this was solid white. So I rendered it out by itself using the whole edges as a mask for the mask. So it would never, th th this when rendered would never protrude outside of the whole edges. And then coming over to the node editor, I took that mask, uh, uh, this might lag a little bit. Anyway, I took the mask right here, the whole mask, and I alpha overed a background plate that I shot. It was just of the still background plate um, by a factor of the whole mask. Um, so now it shows just the empty background plate wherever the whole mask footage is white. So that's how I approached showing the shot on the other side. Then I had the whole edges uh, mostly just because if you get a whole shot through you it's not just going to be flat like that. There's going to be some depth to the hole. Uh, which is why I had the whole edges. And then since this was in the style of a mini game, I decided to keep it cartoony without any sort of gore or anything. So that's how I approached the whole. I guess we should go over some of the other stuff, and I'll just go over the general scene breakdown now. So we've got the hole right there. We've got it all separated out on the layers. We've got the whole mask on its own layer, the hole on its own layer, the whole edges. And then the whole edges, you'll notice, are actually a bigger object than is showing because I have transparency turned on in the object place. So the transparency essentially hides the outside of the whole edges so you only see the whole edges on the inside of the hole. Um, the, the outside part has a mask material. It's uh, It should be a transparent. It is. Okay, good. <laughs> I was scared there for a second. It has a transparency of zero but is set to mask which masks out anything that shows behind it which would be the exterior edges of the hole edges. <laughs> the compositing is very straightforward, the same kind of thing I've done on every other video where I just overlay the footage elements. Um, another interesting thing that I haven't shown before though is probably the particles. What you can do with particles is kind of interesting. Um, I have this set up in a different scene by the way for the different background shots. However, you can't have a background plate per scene. Like The, the background stays consistent jumping between scenes. But how I approached the confetti, uh, which one? Of, there we go. Um, how I approached the confetti was with a particle system, and then I had several different confetti objects, and I set the particle system to groups. So it uses the group confetti. All of these objects are part of the same group called confetti, and I set it to a group, and that way. Um, every particle that it emits, like the next one, is a different piece of confetti that I've modeled. And I can keep adding new objects to this group. Like, let's say I wanted a spherical piece of confetti. I can just put this sphere here and add it to the group. 
confetti. And now you'll notice some of the particles are little spheres. But then if I delete it, they're no longer little spheres. Um, so that's how I approach the confetti to get lots of different particles and keep it kind of random. Other than that, the rest of the scene is essentially the same as everything else I've done on this VizFX blog, and I'm kind of on a tight time budget here. Um, so yeah, I really just wanted to show you how I approached the hole today. One, one more thing, though, that I should show you is that I did split this up into different scenes, um, just to keep it simple. The scenes allow me to have copies of the same camera setup and the same objects, exactly but animate them differently all within the same blender file so I have one scene dedicated to launching confetti for the first guy one scene dedicated to launching confetti for the second guy um, and the animation of the cannon on the proper frames there and whatnot and then I have one scene dedicated to just the guy that gets a hole blown through him and then I have a scene dedicated to text animation and the signs animation scene I didn't use but I was originally going to animate the sign in if I can find that, there we go. So I was originally going to animate the signs in, but decided it was just a waste of time. So that pretty much concludes this breakdown. I hope you learned something, learned to think creatively on problem solving, which is really what visual effects are all about. Um, I guess that really sums it up. If you have any sort of questions, concerns, or comments, or anything like that, post them in the comments below. I appreciate it, and thanks for watching.